So first, so we're going to look right here. It says use the graph of x squared to graph the following. So the first thing we're going to do is graph x squared as the parent graph. So I'm going to put my standard points like that. And I suggest you do the same. So here we have here a standard parabola. And that's something all of you should definitely feel comfortable doing at this point. Then it says we're going to use this graph to graph x squared plus 2 and x squared minus 4. So I know it's intuitive, but I do want to do this kind of methodically. So g of x we're going to do in blue. And I'll add to my chart here. If I'm going to add 2, what that means is simply look at all these y values and add 2. So 6, 3, 2, 3, and 6, which effectively means this graph right here is simply going to move up 2. So that 2 literally means up 2, meaning shift all the y values plus 2 or, again, up 2. Now, the calculator or your iPad has a great feature here. We can duplicate it. I'm going to oh, duplicate. We're going to style it, make it blue because now I can just move it up two units. So one and two. Looks good. So now for the other one, we'll do this in red, h of x. You can probably guess this minus four is going to move the graph down four. And we can see that here. If I just simply subtract four from all the values, you get zero, negative three, negative 4, negative 3, and 0. And again, I'm going to grab this original curve. I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to style it red. So now I can just clearly see 1, 2, 3, 4. And there's our graph. We can see it moving up and down pretty clearly. Now for this next one, we can see Look where it's located. It says x plus 2 inside the function, x minus 4 inside the function. So notice how it's different from these. Right here, I'm going to put a note. These are affecting the y value. So that's why it's moving up and down. But over here, notice how it's actually inside the function. If it's inside the function, what happens is it's actually affecting the x values. So you can probably guess if the first one was moving up and down, we should expect this example to be moving left and right. Now it's a matter of like, how will that actually function. So let's underline i of x. We're going to do that first. I'm going to put i of x here. We'll do that in blue. It says x plus 2 squared. So you're going to look at these values. I want you to add 2 to them and square them. So negative 2 plus 2 squared, that's 0. Negative 1 plus 2 squared, that's 1. 0 plus 2 squared, 4. And so on, we get 9 and 16. Now if I put my original down right here, okay, we're going to, again, duplicate it, style it, blue. Let's see what's actually happening. It says the coordinate is negative 2, 0 and negative 1, 1, which means it actually goes right here because this is where all the points are going to match what we have there, which effectively meant the graph moved left. So that's interesting. This right here moved the graph left to now, that's counterintuitive because some people see the plus 2 and they think, well, that would mean I should add two x values, right? Because that would mean make this become 2. But we can clearly see the coordinates right here. We actually worked it out. That's actually moving it left to. Now, the reason that's happening is because it's basically making the graph start earlier. So when you put plus 2 in here, it's basically saying start the graph two units sooner, which is why each of these points are moving to the left two units. So similarly, you can probably guess what's going to happen here. This minus 4 
must then mean move to the right four. And we can actually see that if I work it out. If I were to subtract four and square it, I'm going to get the following numbers, 36, 25, 16, 9, and 4. And again, that's just saying take this number, minus 4 and square it, minus 4 square, minus 4 and square it. We have those points right there. So now we go to our next example. It says graph that function. Hit the parent graph and the transformations that occur. So parent graph means you have to be able to look at this and figure out, well, what's like the starting point? What's the, the root or the, the parent is per se? So for these, the parent graph was x squared, right? Because I gave you that. And notice how we're applying these numbers to x squared. In the same way, this one, x squared, the parent is x squared. So for this one, I should actually write that. Parent graph is x squared. So for this example, the parent graph is going to be this x cube root. So we can write cube root x. And the transformations that happen, we'll look inside here. This plus 2, we learn that's going to move it left 2. And this minus 3 should move it down 3. So I'm going to sketch the parent. So recall the cube root graph looks something like this. Now let's just grab it. And let's follow the directions. Left two, one, two, down three. One, two, three. And there's our final graph. So now let's go to the next one. Use the graph of root x to define these graphs. So root x, let's do our standard right there. This is from the last video, that's our parent graph. Now it says graph two root x and the root of two x. So for this one, let's do g of x in red. What's happening is this two is on the outside. So what that does is it's actually gonna affect the y values. So think of the y values as like the whole function and x values are like what's inside the function. So in this box right here, we're going to put some notes for transformation. If you have a times f of x, what that means is you have y times a. So for this graph, we're going to take all the y coordinates and multiply them by 2. So 0, 0 should stay. 1, 1 becomes 1, 2. And 4, 2 becomes 4, 4. So here's the graph where the y values multiplied by 2. Now for h of x, a little bit different. See how there's a root on the outside and two's on the inside? In this situation, if a times x like this, you actually multiply x by the reciprocal of what's on the inside, which means for this one, you actually do x times one over two. Whereas for this one, we did y times two. And I'll show you why. So for this point, 0, 0, we know that should still be the same. Now imagine you were to plug in a point here. Let's plug in a nice point. Let's plug in like half. Half times 2 would be 1, which means that the coordinate should be half 1. So that point goes right there. The next point we can plug in, let's plug in 2. So 2 times 2, the root of 4 is 2 which means the point should be 2, 2. So notice how the points are shrinking, that this 1, 1 became half 1. This 4, 2 became 2, 2. So our blue graph, some people say horizontal shrink. Essentially, yes, it is actually compressing by a factor of 2. But for you guys, it's going to be better to just write this, this x times 1 half. That's going to be easy to think about. And then, of course, you're going to have your y times 2 there. Okay, last part. Use the graph of root x. So once again, let's put the root x down. There's our three basic points. 
and we're going to graph negative root x and root of negative x. So for your notes here, you're going to write negative f of x. What that's going to do is it's going to reflect over the x-axis, and that's because you're going to negate the y values. So for i of x, we'll do that in red. We're simply going to reflect it over the x-axis, so this should look like this. Now for k of x, a little bit different. If the negative is on the inside, you're going to reflect over the y-axis, and that's because you're going to negate x. So all the x values get negated, so it should look like this. So now we go to our final example. It says graph this pretty complex thing. See at the parent graph. So we should notice there's absolute value in x. So we should notice, or we should write, absolute value x as the parent graph. Now for transformations, there are a lot of things happening. We have a negative, a two, a two here, a three here. So clearly we gotta figure out a way to write them all down. So before we can finish this question, we're gonna go here the order of transformations. Now there are lots of ways to do this, but this is the way I prefer you do it. There are two steps I want you to go through. The first thing you're always gonna do is you're gonna want to reflect and stretch your function first. That'll be your step one. That's the most complicated stuff, so you wanna take care of that first. The second and last thing you're gonna do is going to be translate. You translate last because that's the easiest thing to do. So let's try it. So step one, I see there's a two on the outside and a negative, which means we have to stretch y by two, so multiply all y values by two, and you're also gonna have to reflect over the x-axis. And the final thing is the movement. I see a minus two in there, so that's gonna be right two, plus three is gonna mean up three. So let's start by sketching the parent graph. So we have something like that. But you wanna do the following things, y times two and reflect over x-axis. So if I do y times two, the graph should be zero, zero, one, two, negative one, two. And if you reflect it, the points will be down here. So you wanna do that first. Now, once you have step one done, that's when you can start drawing it in because your iPad cannot take care of the rest. We're gonna grab that and move it left to one, two, up three, one, two, three. And there's our graph. So to summarize everything, on the bottom of your paper, I want you to write this down. For translation, we talked about this could happen f of x, let's say like plus two, and then we do minus three. This effective, effectively will move your graph left two, down three. If it were f of x minus two plus three, this is gonna mean we move right two and up three. For stretching, we have, let's say it was two times your function. We did two actually, let's do three. Let's say it was three times your function. That's gonna mean y times three. If it were f of three x, that's gonna mean x times the reciprocal or one third. Or if it were a fraction, let's say it was like one over four x, the reciprocal would be x times four. And then for reflection, if it's negative f of x, again, that's going to reflect over the x axis, and f of negative x, that's going to reflect over the y axis. So as a quick summary with a couple of examples. So good luck on your homework.